oh are we are we live <laughs> oh this live stuff is is craziness um i am hoping you can see me and hear me i am waiting for a comment um if someone could leave a comment and let me know that you can hear me see me that we're live hello debbie I'm guessing that because you said hi to me, that means you can see me. Um, we're just going to give this like a couple seconds here to make sure we have good broadcasting. Hello, hello. I am so excited to be live with you today. Um, what is this now? My third or fourth time? And that's the scariest part. The, are we live? <laughs> you know, I'm just wondering. Anyhow. Welcome. My name is Jackie Ballheis. Um, if you have not watched any of my videos yet, welcome. I'm so excited you're here. Um, it is March 1st. Can you believe that? And it is 3 p.m. Eastern time. So if you are watching right now, you're watching live. If it is other than 3 p.m. Eastern time, you're watching the replay. That's one of the beauties of live. You can watch the replay later. Now, if you are new to following me, um, I just started doing lives not that long ago, and I promise you, I don't get all chit chatty through it. I want to just give it maybe a minute or so, get everybody on here, and we're going to dive right into today's project. I like to make the lives as close to my regular videos as I can. I am short, sweet, to the point. We are all about making quick and easy cards. So welcome, welcome. Um, just a couple of things before we dive in. Being March, we have some brand new products. Stampin' Up! released the Waves of Inspiration, I think the collection's called. And that's what we're going to play with today. I have a ton of ideas to share with you from super simple focusing on the designer series paper to lots of tips for stamping and die cutting. So I can't wait to share with you today. Um, as you're kind of getting settled in being March, it's a brand new host code. So if you'd like to place a Stampin' Up! order with me, make sure you check on my website, clompenstampers.com, and you can grab that host code over there. Because when you place an order with me and you use the host code, you accumulate points towards a free stamp set. Hello, we all love free stamp sets, right? Um, you can read all about that over on my website. I just want to make sure I always tell that right off. And while you're over there, make sure you also subscribe to my newsletter. If you don't already, get my Friday newsletter, and sometimes one in between, but typically on Friday. Uh, make sure you've subscribed. Every week I send two to three different card making tutorials to you. You can download them, you can print them, you can keep them, um, just to give you all kinds of stamping ideas. And even if you don't have the same products, and uh, usually those ideas you can use them with things that you have already so i just want to welcome megan megan is our moderator and um, she is here to kind of chat with you answer some questions because once i get stamping i don't read comments at all i like to focus on what i'm sharing with you so i'm just checking in here making sure it looks like everything is working okay oh my gosh it looks like sharon is here my friend Sharon has joined us um I love to join her lives and now she's paying me back so she might be heckling a little bit so um but I think we are ready to dive in like I said it is March 1st that means new products which we all love new products so let's go ahead and we are gonna just do a little switcheroo here so you can see my new products um I have some paper that is unbelievably gorgeous. This is, and I don't know all the right terminology. Waves of Inspiration, I think, is the overall collection. And we've got designer series paper. We have foil paper, which I didn't grab the foil paper, and uh, stamps and dies and some beautiful rhinestones. Now, it looks, I must have used a whole sheet already. I have five pieces of this paper here. Does anybody know what this looks like? Some of you may have used this, um, done this technique before, not stamping related. It is called acrylic pour, I believe. And they mix paint and with all the special stuff and they you pour it, usually it's done on a canvas for on the wall. Actually in my blog post, I'm gonna show a couple pictures. Um, my daughter actually, got to do that, um, went to a class with Sharon um, to do acrylic pouring. And it is 
gorgeous. So when Stampin' Up! made this designer series paper, they did that. They did some acrylic pouring on canvases and then photographed it to get this paper. So this is pictures um, of actual acrylic pouring and it is crazy gorgeous. Like I just want to frame these. I think that they'd be beautiful on a wall. And when we flip them over, we've got some fun colors, little softer colors on the back as well. Now this paper and the foils and these beautiful blue tone rhinestones. Uh, can you get pick up the color on there? Um, those are available while supplies last. The stamps and the dies will actually be in the new catalog that comes out in May. So um, if you like the papers, make sure you grab those before they're gone. Now, you guys know me in paper. We are going to start out. I just want to share a project really focusing on the paper. Then we'll move into the stamps and the dies because I'm kind of a paper freak. And I have not put any of these together yet to know what it looks like. Usually I make something first to check it out. But I thought this paper was so beautiful that we can't just, you know, let it go to waste. So I thought it would make the perfect set of just note cards and envelopes. You know, I do this quite a bit with different papers. Um, you know, I kind of believe that paper doesn't have to always go with the stamps and dies. A lot of times these papers stand alone. And I'm all about just sending random cards for the heck of it to kind of brighten up someone's day. So I thought we could just take this paper and glue it onto the front of a note card and envelope. And then I pre-stamped here just a little greeting. Let today be the start of something new. And I thought that's all it takes. Remember, I am the simple stamper. We're going to keep this as easy as we can keep it. And I thought, perfect little note card. Now, I'm not even going to stamp anything inside because I thought, well, that would be perfect to send to somebody just like it is. You know, it's a great way to even use up your like scraps of designer series paper. You know, so often I hear people Talk about hoarding paper. It's like you buy this pretty paper and you don't use it. Well, what good is that? If you're not going to use it, you're not blessing anybody by sending them fun cards. So since we're not going to really do much else to that, I thought, let's just pretty up our envelope a little bit. And you know what? This is a big envelope. I was supposed to put that on. Oh, no wonder I don't have the right size envelope. Well, we're making a big envelope here, even though our note card's not going to fit in it. What I would do is do this on a note card envelope, and it would go perfectly with our little note card. But I wanted to start this way before I dive, dived, dove into the stamps um, to just show you how quick and easy you can make some note cards, envelopes that fit, obviously, add a greeting to it when you've got beautiful paper. So. That's kind of our first project we're going to call that. Super simple. Doesn't get any, any more simple than that. Now, let's take a look at the stamps. I was like super excited when I saw this. We've got this beautiful wave on here. I am absolutely a beach person. Put me on the beach any day. You wouldn't know it because I live in Michigan. But this just, I thought it was beautiful. Now, when I first started playing around with it and started stamping it, I thought I kind of tried different things and I finally came up with, I liked it best when I use the Stamparatus. Oops, sorry, you're getting a little bit of a glare there um, because I wanted to get some multiple colors on, on the wave. And I'll show you what I mean. I, I started out, we have the wave on here already and I'm going to use Balmy Blue. And when I stamp this, it does look beautiful. You'll see here in just one second. Oh, I got to check out how to share with you. I um, bought this a long time ago and I completely forgot to use it. Do you ever have trouble with your Stamparatus feeling like you got to press so hard and everything? This, believe it or not, was super cheap. It came off Amazon and it is for like a little air, po um, air hockey game. Okay, it's a felt pad on here. And I found that if I just rub this across, the felt just goes really you know, smooth on there, it makes it really easy to press on that Stamparatus. Um, and you can see we need a little bit more pressure there, or we might need a little more ink there. Let's ink that up. And if you have troubles with these, sometimes using um, this will help press a little bit harder. 
Boy, that just does not want to stamp there, does it? Hmm. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. I need to really press hard. So there is what that wave looks like if we are to just stamp it. Okay, it's beautiful. We could go ahead and finish this card. But I wanted to put a few more colors in there. So I took a sponge dauber and I started out with some Pacific Point and let's move this over a little bit here. And I took the sponge dauber, daubed it in that Pacific Point, and then I just added some kind of random leaf. Okay, just a little bit here, a little bit there. No real rhyme or reason to it. And then we're going to stamp it again. Okay, just stamp right over that balmy blue. We can give it some good pressure. You can use your little um, air hockey tool here to press on there and then open it up. And you can see, gosh, we are not doing good here. <laughs> it kind of smeared a little bit. I'm going to flip that over, people. Um, live, live, live. See, this is how Jackie stamps for real. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and stamp that balmy blue because I want to show you how pretty this ends up being. So take two. And we're going to add this. Now, notice I'm not using the magnets. I tend to not use the magnets. As long as you keep this nice and tight in the corner there, you should be okay without it sliding, which obviously did not work. There we go. See how we got a little bit more color in there? I added that Pacific point, And then I'm even going to come and use some Night and Navy. And let's just add a little bit more of this Night and Navy in there to give it even more color. Now, once I started playing around and I stamped a couple of these, it was like, oh, what a difference it made with all these different shades. So with the Stamparatus, it really makes it easy to do that. I thought that was like super fun. Now, rather than going and stamping a bunch of cards here, we're going to do a little bit of stamping and a little bit of show and tell. So here was the first card I made. Now, notice that this piece was larger than what I used on my card. I found it was way easier to stamp that wave on a full quarter sheet, but then I just took my paper trimmer and cut it down to the size I needed. I And, and I don't know, this might just be a, a personal thing, but I didn't like it, like if the wave kind of got cut off a little bit before the edge there. So I made sure that with my paper trimmer, I cut so the wave was all the way to the edge. Now, all the cards that I have to share with you, I will have a picture of these over on my website along with all the measurements. So if you'd like to make these, you'll be able to real easily be able to go over there and, and grab um, the measurements for it. But I kept it super simple, just stamped a couple of our little seagulls on there and our greeting. And isn't that beautiful? And then on the inside, I used one of the other greetings that were in the stamp set and then stamped their pelican. So super simple for our first card. Well, then I decided we need to step it up just a little bit. So I pulled in our dies. Now, this is where the magic comes into play. There are two different dies here that cut out this, I'm going to call it a wave um, image, but it's more just the detail part of our wave. And you can see here, I just have one with one of the different blues. Okay, let's grab, um, let's see, if we take this piece, you can see this, I just adhered it right over that wave to give it so much detail. Isn't that pretty? It's got a little bit of um, that shiny to it, but it just steps it up from our original one here. Now, these actually can stack. Now, I, because I like things pretty clean and simple. Personally, I thought that was a little bit too busy for me. Now, if you like lots of busyness, um, you, you may like this. And, and I've seen some beautiful cards with everything going on at once. But to me, it was a little bit too busy. I like this one. So I just layered one of them on here to make my card. And then with our pelican here, we die cut them, popped up on, on the dimensionals, and then the happy birthday. This is a, there's two different labels here, and I'll show you a trick for the bigger one. But you can see they've got these little cutout pieces on the edge. So I thought it was perfect to add that linen thread in there um, 
with a little bow and then see the little rhinestones. So again, it is really a simple card, but look at how by stepping it up with a little die cutting, it changes it a lot. Now, this one um, is very similar. This one I didn't add our sparkle to, but I did add the penguin on penguin pelican. <laughs> I think I'm still at Christmas, but I wanted to show you what I did here because this was one of the labels. Um, your strength is an inspiration. And I actually have someone I'm going to send this card to. But what I wanted was just a little piece to thread through that part of it. So I cut, I think this is a half inch, little strip of Knight of Navy. And I used our tag punch here. And we're going to just punch that in. And then I just fed it through. Okay. So that just adds a nice little detail. And I like to use scotch tape. I use this a lot on my, um, when I'm creating, because all I did was just kind of centered that nice in the middle there, a little piece of scotch tape on the back to hold it. And then when I layered it onto my card here, I used dimensionals, stuck it on there, and then I trimmed it. You can see it's even right here on our edge. So that way you don't have to decide what length to cut the strip. You can just go ahead and um, stick it in there and then trim it off to where you want it. So again, there is just our stepped up version. So you can see how just adding a little extra to it really, it's easy. There's just a couple more pieces. So I know some of you are going to ask how I glued down this piece because it is really fine. Now you can use the adhesive sheets, but I found it is just as easy for me to use my liquid adhesive. And I just put teeny tiny dots, be really careful, teeny tiny, um, and, be able, and just adhere it down. Now I have another fun trick to share with you because I made this card. Now this one is a square. I like square cards, but I like to make them four and a quarter by four and a quarter because that way they will still fit in a regular envelope. If you go any bigger, you're going to have to have special envelopes and it generally costs more postage. So this way it'll still fit. Let's see. Let's find the envelope we already made. Um, and you can still put it in there. It's just a little, you know, extra on both sides, but it will work to mail it in a regular envelope. Now, see the water down here? I didn't want the wave part. I just wanted a nice straight line there. So what I did is let's bring our our wave back over here and let's see I should have another piece now this time let's you know what this let's get that out of the way we don't need that do we what I wanted to do and I gotta I have to think here we are gonna stamp down at the bottom of our piece of cardstock so I'm just kind of moving it where I want it and we'll use our magnets here to, to hold it I think that'll work right there let's see there we go. So we can go ahead and we can do the same thing. We're going to ink it up with balmy blue and get that on there. This is where I have a piece of that grid paper. The small size grid paper is actually made to fit in the Stamparatus. Um, so with um, adding a little more color, we don't even have to do that wave part because we're not going to use it. We can do that. And let's see. Maybe we'll put a little Knight of Navy in here as well, just to get some more shades. But I did it upside down. So now we can take our piece and you'll see our card has, I don't know what this is, maybe three and a half, three and three quarters. It's this way. So I can trim this down. Again, I started with that quarter sheet to give myself enough room and I can trim it down and I have that nice straight line on the top to go all the way across the bottom. So that's a little tip if you don't want the wave part, but you wanna be able to get a nice straight line. Okay, let's set that aside. And I don't know if you can see close on this one there, if we tilt it a little bit. See the cloud and the seagulls, those are dies as well. And the cloud, there's the two pieces that cut out the outline, which would be these two, and then these, See how it's a little detailed? Um, it, I mean, it's pretty fine detail, but it really makes that cloud pop and give it more detail. 
Okay, well, let's see. I got a couple other cards to share with you. And then I think we're going to wrap it up for today. So these two, which will go with our envelope that we made, I just took that paper again and cut it down. I think we're five by three and three quarters on this one. I bordered it with white. I love using white as a layer. And then just the greetings. And here you can see I put the a, a strip through there as well and punched it with that tag punch. Um, added a couple of those rhinestones. An easy peasy um, card with just really focusing on that designer series paper because it is so beautiful. I love this paper. I got to order a bunch of it before it's gone because remember the paper and the foil, okay, and the rhinestones are only available while supplies last. Stamps and dies will be in the new catalog and we can get these for, I shouldn't say forever, but for the next catalog that's coming out in May. It's just an early release. All righty. I think that's all I have um, to share with you today. So like I said, brand new products. Um, if you hop over to my website, the link to it will be down in the description of the video. You can click on um, a little button and you'll be able to see all of these brand new products. You can buy them all as a collection or buy the parts and pieces that you like. Over there, you will also find pictures of my cards so that you can get the measurements if you'd like to make these yourself. Um, all that information is over there as well. And I have to remind you, if you are not on my newsletter, get on my newsletter. Um, like I said, I send out free tutorials every Friday um, for you to download and use. And that's how I keep you updated as to what's happening. And besides these new products, there's also a great 20% off sale going on. For the month of March, Stampin' Up! has 13 different bundles, stamp set and dies at a 20% discount, as well as the mini Stampin' Cut and Bust machine is 20% off. So all that information is over on my website. So just use the link to go over there and get all of that information. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I will be live again in two weeks. I hope you enjoyed the projects. I hope they inspired you to create cards, but more importantly, I hope that you create them and send them. Make someone's day by popping in a card into their mailbox and nothing better than getting happy mail. So we'll talk to you again real soon. Bye, thanks for tuning in.